Hey, welcome back to Ryan's Garage. Today, we have an exciting project that any of you rat bastards could do in your driveway any day of the week. Except for Sunday, that's the Lord's Day. So, what we got today is my 2014 Ford Explorer Sport on the lift. It is not the Pathfinder from Hell. That is done and gone, thank God. It is the Explorer Sport. A little bit about this car. V6, 3.5 liter twin turbo. This thing rips, all wheel drive. So, it's got plenty of go. Today, we're gonna add plenty of woe. See what I did there? Clever. We're gonna do is some front brakes, okay? Something you guys can do in your driveway. So let me get the camera set here for you. All right, you can see right there behind me, we have the car is already up on the lift. Sorry about this, little technical difficulties. There we go, beautiful. Okay, car's on the lift. So this is a your front disc brake setup here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to change out the pads, okay? Now normally when we do a brake job, we would do pads and rotors, but today these rotors are still in good shape. And they got plenty of life left in them. And uh, I don't have cash for rotors right now, so it's gonna have to wait. So here's what we got. We are going to change out the pads only, okay? So we start off by removing the caliper from the caliper bracket, okay? <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Scared myself. Get the bolts out. One, two, okay? Now you notice when I pull these out, this upper pin has a bushing on it, okay? Let me clean it for you so you can get a better look at that for you. There you go, it's got a bushing on it, okay? You wanna examine that bushing. If that bushing is swollen or gone, you will need what's called a boot kit, all right? This one is in good shape. You also wanna remember that where they go, the bushing goes up on the top bolt, all right? This other uh, pin, as you see, as I'll clean it off, there is no bushing, okay? It's got a little rust spot in it though, which we'll address that in a minute, okay? No bushing though, so that's the lower bolt. All right. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to remove the caliper, but we don't want the caliper to hang from the hose. It's very, very da damaging to the hose. So we take it off, we flip it over, lay it up on top like that. Now you'll see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, these brakes have like no life left in them. They are as, they are with a thin, all right? So it was, we caught this just in time. I think a couple more days of driving on these and I'd be grinding. So there we go. Good job. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the bracket, okay? We'll switch up our sockets here. Bracket bolts are a little bigger. And two. Okay. The bracket comes off, and you see the outer pad is also wafer thin. Now, I already did the other side of these brakes, and I can tell you they are not wearing evenly, okay? The other side was probably almost double of what's left on this one. So that's an indicator that there's a problem here, all right? And chances are that rust spot on that pin is the problem. If these pins are not greased and clean, the caliper won't slide, okay? The caliper needs to slide in order to stop on both brake pads. It looks like this one wasn't sliding very well, okay? So we'll address that. All right, next stop, we'll go to the bench. Okay, we're on the bench. So, I've got the caliper bracket in the vise, as you can see right there. Let me lower this down a little bit, get you a better shot of it. There we go. A good brake job, in order for a brake job to be successful, it's all about the preparation, okay? So, what we want to do here is, as you see, we have these anti-rattle clips. And look, this one's actually loose and falling off. So, we're going to get rid of these, all right? Take them out. Now, take note before you take this crap apart how they are configured, okay? It has this little tab, and the tabs stick out. So, we want to get rid of these old ones, all right? We'll just toss them right in the trash. We take, oh, we take a wire brush. If you don't have a wire brush, go get your toothbrush. Ew. Just don't brush your teeth with it afterwards. Clean the surfaces. Get all the scale out of there, okay? Don't breathe that dust if you can, all right? Do both sides. Get them nice and clean, okay? Again, this is the key to a good brake job is preparation, all right? We'll get these babies all cleaned up. It's looking pretty. The new brakes came with new clips. We'll put those in like this. Maybe, maybe, hold on. Get in there, you little mother. There we go. Okay, all right, so we got one, two. Make sure you get them all the way in, all the way seated, otherwise the brake shoe, or the brake pad rather, won't fit, okay? This one goes in like this, okay? This one goes in like this. Now the next thing we wanna do, very important, is we want to Get a shot of that for you, a little close up there. We want to make sure we put a little lube on that, okay? The brake pads need to be able to slide in and out, okay? 
And in order for that to happen, they have to be lubricated. So I like to use the black caliper grease. Get a little swash of grease in there. Now you don't want to put so much on that when the brakes heat up, this turns into liquid and winds up all over the rotor. But on the other hand, you don't want to put such a small amount on there that you know the first puddle that you go through would wash it away. So you know, use your better judgment. I feel like uh, Bob Ross right now. Look at that. Look at there. We're just painting happy little brake jobs, right? Like that. All right. Good. A little bit on this one there. Okay. There we go. Okay. And you are ready to go back on the car. Oh, uh, one note. You can see the pin. I put it on the wire wheel and got rid of the rusty spot on it. All right. That's important. We'll go over that in a minute. Okay. I'll see you back at the car. Okay. We're back. So caliper bracket has been prepped. We are ready to put it back on the vehicle. Okay. Double check. Make sure we got it greased up real good. Slide it over top of the rotor. Two bolts. Some guys like to put thread lock on these. I don't. Um, it's up to you, your preference, whatever you want to do. All right, put that down like this. We'll reverse our gun. Now, these things need to be tight. Come on, come on. There was a torque spec for that. Uh, today, we're using the three Ugga Duggas. Okay, all right, so we're going to put the pads on next. If you'll notice, the pads are marked outer and inner. Okay, the inner would be over here or the inboard side, and it just slides on like this. Okay, you can see they have this, this little tanger there. It's again for anti rattle, all right, anti rattle, anti vibration, anti squeal. The outer, same deal, goes on like that. Okay, we're almost ready to put the caliper on. We need to squeeze the caliper pistons back into the caliper. This is a dual piston caliper. Roll you in here a little tighter so you can see. There we go. Dual piston caliper. In order to do that, you're going to need one of these. It's a beautiful tool right here. All right. Works real simply. Put it in like this. Give it a little squeeze. And there you go. Squeeze those pistons back. Oh, now, you notice I did not open the bleeder. Okay. As I squeeze these pistons back, you hear that? That is not me wetting my pants. That is brake fluid that is flowing up out of the master cylinder, okay? And that's quite all right to do. That's not a problem, all right? We'll do, whoop, oh, geez. Bump, the, bump the camera. We'll address that in a minute. Now, next thing we want to do is we're going to put our pins back in. Caliper is ready to go back on. When you put the caliper back on the car, like this, you want to make sure that your boots aren't torn, that they're laying properly, okay? You also want to check your hoses. Make sure you don't twist your hose. All right, twisting your hose is not good. All right, it'll lead to other problems. So now we're gonna put the pins back in, okay? Little grease, little grease on the pin. All right, we want these pins to slide in and out easily. So I like to put a lot on there, all right? And I make sure I get the tip of it. All right, the top one had the bushing. In it goes, hand start it. Always start your bolts by hand. Never shove them in a gun and, and NASCAR them on. You're not that good. You will cross-thread them. And then when you cross-thread them, you'll be saying, I should have listened to Ryan. Damn it, the hell. All right, so the bottom pin is all greased up. In it goes. Okay, start it by hand. Now, we tighten it up. Uh-oh, where's the other socket? There it is. I thought it fell on the floor. Tighten these up. There you have it. Brake pads hung in a matter of minutes. This is a term for this would be calling hanging and banging, all right, since we're not putting rotors on. Okay, so we have our brake pads installed. We've pumped up the brake pedal. You always wanna make sure you pump up the brake pedal. When you're done doing brakes, you never wanna just jump in the car and drive out because you'll drive through the garage door. You will have no brakes, the brake pedal will fall to the floor, so you make sure you pump up the brake pedal. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flush the brake fluid, okay? Uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture, okay? As brake fluid ages, it absorbs more and more moisture. The more moisture that's absorbed into the brake fluid, the lower the boiling point, okay? Brakes obviously get extremely hot. We want to make sure that those brake, that the brake fluid doesn't boil, all right? So if it boils, you lose your brakes. Basically, they get spongy and not a good thing to be, not a good situation to be in. So we're going to use this tool right here. This is a... Uh, air-operated fluid evacuator. 
How's that? Sound pro sounds very spe uh, special, very fancy. Anyway, we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna suck the old brake fluid out of the master cylinder, and then we're gonna fill it with fresh fluid. Okay, sit tight. Let me get it set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got the vacuum hose or the air compressed air line hooked to the fluid evacuator. This thing creates a vacuum. I take the small tube, I stick it in the master cylinder, and as you'll see, I suck out the fluid. I don't think you see that. It's really kind of gross and green. You can hear it, see it up there, and it looks like a, a yellowish green color. Okay, that is not good. So, what we're going to do is going to work the tube around in the master cylinder here, try to get as much fluid out of the, of the master cylinder that we possibly can. Right? If you can get the master cylinder, uh, cylinder completely empty, that would be ideal. Right? Okay. So we've gotten all the fluid out of the master cylinder that we can get. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to top it off with fresh fluid. Okay, we're now at the right rear of the vehicle. I have the evacuator hooked up to the actual caliper and the bleeder screw right up here. All right, now what I'll do is I'll pull a vacuum on each caliper all each, at each four wheels, starting with the right rear. Then we we'll go left rear, right front, left front, and we'll draw fluid out until it's clean. All right. Uh, one thing to note, these, this evacuator comes with a handy dandy little adapter set like this. Okay, so we go from a hard tube to a adapter hose, I guess you could say, that's built to bleed brakes. Okay, so let me plug in the air and we'll get it going. Okay. The bleeder's opened up. Just make sure it's open all the way. Now, if no fluid flows out of here, you might have a bleeder that's there. It's starting to go now. Okay. Okay. So it's going to take a minute or so. You can kind of see it bubbling up here in the, in the corner. All right. It's pulling the dirty fluid out. And what's happening now is all the fresh fluid that we put in the master cylinder is being pulled down through the vehicle, through the ABS system, down the lines, into this caliper. That's why we let it go until we keep clean, fresh brake fluid. You have to be careful when you do this that you don't suck the master cylinder dry. If you suck the master cylinder dry, you're having a bad day. You now have to bleed the entire brake system out, and that's going to take time. It's going to be very aggravating, very costly, so don't do that. All right, so it's flowing pretty good. Very, very frothy. Hoping you can see this. Let me get to a little shot of it. Pressure just kicked on. Sorry if you can't hear me. There's the bleeder screw up there. You can see it pulling fluid through. Okay. And we're about done. It's, it's looking better and better. This also keeps any corrosion from building up inside the uh, components the wheel cylinders, the calipers, master cylinder. It'll keep things from failing prematurely. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. So now when I stop it, I pull the hose off. When I pull the hose off, there's a tendency for the fluid to flow back or air actually to be back into the master cylinder. So I'll let it go until I see a couple drips. And that is a caliper. And then I'll tighten it up. Right about there. Tighten it down. Right like that. Now I'll wash it down with some brake cleaning. And, uh, you know, make sure it's good to go. All right, see you at the next wheel. Wheel number two. This is the left rear wheel. Crack it open. Make sure it's open a bunch here. So, so it has free flow. All right, draw it out. Go, baby. And it's starting to pull it. Now, if you get done flushing out the brake fluid in this method, and you find you have a spongy pedal, chances are you've gotten air in the system somewhere, and you just need to do a, a wheel, a, a brake bleed at each wheel. Not a big deal. Alright? You can see it flowing. You don't need to just watch this all day long. I know if I watch this all day long, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'm going to stop you guys, and I'll finish it up. Okay. Still on the left rear wheel, I want to show you guys the method for when you're done, what to do here. Let me get you in tight. Hopefully. Hello, hello. Hopefully you can see this. 
Where are you? Okay, so I'm going to pull the hose off. Now I'm going to watch that bleeder. You see the bubbles coming out of it. I always like to give it a pat. Get all the air, because it actually will suck air back in if you're not careful. I hope you guys can see this, because it's wonderful. How is it? Hard to get the camera in here, sorry guys. Now we'll tighten it up. That sucks. My camera still stink, I apologize. There we go. Okay, now we'll tighten it up. Now that it's dripping. Cameraman, I am not. Okay. There you have it. Okay, we're on to the front wheels. This is the right front. Break that leader loose. Oh, don't go that way. All right, you see the fluid starting to run out of it? You stick the little tube on there. Now, the front brakes are going to flow a lot better than the rears, okay? We all know that the car draw, uh, stops with the majority of the front brakes. But it does most of the stopping with the front brakes, I should say. So, they are going to flow a little bit better than the rears. You can see it coming out of there like gangbusters. Right now, gangbusters. Who the hell does that? Anyway, some safety precautions on brake fluid. We talked about it being hyperscopic, okay? You also don't want to get it on a painted surface. So if you were messing around with somebody's brakes and you get brake fluid on their fender or on their hood or wherever, you get the nearest hose and you wash that off as fast as you can. If you don't clean it today, there'll be no paint tomorrow, okay? You have a shop with a nice painted floor like this one, you clean it up as soon as it gets on the floor. That's what I was doing when we were pausing. I was cleaning up my mess, okay? You don't want to be a monster and leave the brake fluid lay all over the place, okay? You clean up after yourself. You, you know, you're acting like a professional here, okay? Now, so we are flowing pretty clean right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to show you guys that, um, I'll show you guys that, you know, the, the gravity bleed procedure. Let me get you in real close here so you get a good look at that bleeder. Sorry for the bumpy ride there. Okay, ready? So we pull it off. You can see the bleeder. We wait for the fluid to come out. See the bubbles? And now the fluid is flowing out. You get a little tap tap. You see the bubbles coming out of it there too. See that? That's all air that's in there. Give a little pat. Okay. Once it's flowing and dripping, you can see the bubbles are still coming out. So you have to be careful with this. Okay. Sorry, the compressor just kicked on. All right. Let's tighten it up. I think we're good. Oh, hold on. We got a little bit more coming out of there. She's a bubbly one. Come on. Tighten it up. Done. All right. Go grab some brake clean. Let's get some brake clean on there and clean it up. We don't want to leave a mess. Oh, right thing here. Wash it all down. Real good. Don't be cheap with the brake clean. Alright? There you go. Now we're ready to move on to the last wheel. And then when we're done that, we'll set the level of the brake fluid in the master cylinder. Sit tight. Okay, last wheel. Left front, last wheel, okay? Get the tire out of the way here. Hook up the vacuum gate. The vacuum's gonna suck right here. Fluid will evacuate. Okay, get a wrench on there. Now what I did was I went around beforehand and I made sure that all my uh, leaders moved, all right? If they don't, don't do this job. You might break one of them off, and then you got a real problem on there, okay? Another thing I didn't show on camera was that between each wheel, I lowered the truck down and filled the, the master cylinder to the very top of fluid, okay? I didn't want to take any chances of that master cylinder running dry, okay? Very important step. you got to keep that master cylinder full of fluid. All right, so we're flowing out our last brake uh, line here. So now there's fresh fluid throughout the brake system in this truck. This thing should stop on a dime. Or at least have a nice hard rock hard pedal. Like I said before, if you do this job and you get in it and the pedal is soft, just go around and bleed the brakes. Alright? A way to gravity bleed these brakes, real simple. Take the cap off the master cylinder. You won't have this hooked up. 
Open up the bleeders. Let it go. It will drip. All right. Again, watch the master cylinder. Don't let it run dry. All right. So we're flowing pretty clean right now. I'll give it a couple more seconds. I just want to make sure I get it all out. All right. I don't want any of the old brake fluid in this system. I want all fresh. Now, if you wanted to upgrade from say dot three to dot four, this would be a good way to do that. All right. You can literally don't suck the thing dry. Just pull out the master cylinder and then fill it up with dot four fluid and do the same procedure. Okay. Once again, pull the hose off, wait for the fluid to come out. You see a bubble in there. Give a little tap therapy to get it flowing here, folks. Out it comes, a couple more bubbles. That should do it. Tighten it up. Give it a good hosing with spray clean. Okay, final step then, after everything's been flushed out, we top off our master cylinder. Now, you don't want to fill it, you, want to, you don't want to overfill it, you want to fill it to the full line. A lot of people don't realize is that on the master cylinder, there is a float inside there, okay? When the brakes wear out, the master cylinder level goes down. The brake cylinder, the master cylinder float is designed that when the brakes are worn out, the fluid level hits a certain point, it puts the red brake light on. It's almost like a warning to the driver that you need brakes, okay? Problem is, we got these idiots. I shouldn't say that, that's, that's harsh. Idiot is harsh. We have these uh, uneducated, uneducated technicians that work at the, you know, the oil change places, Jiffy Lube and whatnot, and they top off the master cylinder at oil changes. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be topping off your master cylinder. Let the level go down, as the brakes wear out, and it will turn the red brake light on when it gets to a certain point, okay? When you flush out the brake fluid and you reset it, now we put brake pads on this car, so that actually makes it even better. Whereas, you know, the brake uh, pads are brand new. Now, if we did four wheel brakes, it'd be even better, but that wasn't the case today. It didn't need it. So, uh, there you have it. I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, another couple of quick tips for you, and we'll call it a day. Okay little tip for you guys today. You have drain pans in your shop, something like this, and they get gross and, and nasty inside. So I found a little trick that works really great for me. I have these uh, containers that I use for waste oil. Never ever dump waste oil into the drain or into a creek or a river or whatever. Dispose of it, of it properly, right? Put it in a container like this, take it over to a shop that you know. If you keep it clean where it's just oil and you don't mix oil and coolant, a lot of places will take it and they'll recycle it and you keep the container. Don't give them the container, okay? So what I like to do is, I'll take my, my, uh, my little bucket here, put it in like so, all right? Now I'll tilt it, I'll get it to stand up on its end. I'll take some brake cleaner and just hose it out a little bit. Okay, give it a good washing. Now, I will literally stick the can underneath it like this. I'll let it sit like that overnight. Tomorrow, when I come back into the shop, that will be spotless and ready to go. That way, if I need to use it for coolant, I can use it for coolant. If I need to use it for oil, I can use it for oil. And it doesn't get contaminated. I don't have to have 55 of these drain pans laying around my shop. I just take care of the ones I got. All right, so that's it for today. I'm Ryan's Garage, I hope you learned something. Uh, hope you had fun. Because I know it was, I was thrilled the whole time I did it. I was. You couldn't see, but on the inside, I was just loving life, all right? Remember, learn something today, because if you don't, tomorrow, somebody's going to call you a shithead. Thanks for watching.